In this demonstration, we're going to look at how we can configure Windows Server 2012 to be used as an iSCSI target server. Within Exchange Server 2016, this can then be used to store our log files in our database files. So for all intents and purposes, we're going to use a Windows 2012 box as a storage area network. So I've come onto my Windows Server 2012 box, I've come into Server Manager, and on Server Manager, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add roles and features. This will then bring me into Wizard. Within the wizard, just on the before we begin button, we'll have a quick read through. We'll then select next. Installation type will be rule based or feature based installation as the iSCSI target server is a rule and select next. Server selection, I'm going to install on the server I'm currently running server manager from and select next. Under server roles, I'm just going to expand up file and storage services. And what I want to install here is I want to just expand up file and iSCSI services scroll down and what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for iSCSI target server select my next button we won't bother installing any additional features so we'll select next have a quick read through and select install this will take a couple of minutes to install so at this point here we'll just pause the demonstration and return back once the installation is complete so as we can see now the role is now installed so we'll select the close button we'll then expand up our file and storage services Then what we'll do is come to iSCSI and what we want to do here is we now want to create some iSCSI targets. So first thing for us to do is to actually create an iSCSI virtual disk. So we'll go for tasks. Within our task we're going to create a new iSCSI virtual disk. That's going to bring us into a wizard. So within the wizard what we're going to do here is we're going to select our C drive. Which we have down here. And what we're going to do is we're then going to start creating our iSCSI virtual disk. So at this point here we'll select next. Then it'll ask us what do we want to call it. I'm going to call main iSCSI disk 1 and select next. So I'm going to say how big do you want it. I just want this to be 2 gig. Obviously in the real world you probably make this much bigger. Also what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to go for the um, dynamic expanding disk. Again in the real world I'll probably go with fixed and select next. I currently don't have an iSCSI target, so at this point here we're going to create a new iSCSI target, and this is what the Exchange server will connect to. So the Exchange server will be the initiator, this server is currently the target. So we'll select next at this point here. So I'm going to ask us to fill out a table, so we need to give the iSCSI target a name. I'm going to call mine lon-ax1, that's what's actually going to connect to it. I'll probably give this a meaningful name out there again in the real world, so we'll select next. On the access servers, we're now going to see what can connect to this iSCSI target. So all I'm going to do at this point here is select my add button. Then within my little wizard here, what I want to do here is I just want to do a query. And I want to query the ID of the LON EX1 server. So we'll select our browse button. That then brings us into do a search. So I'll type in LON-EX1. We'll just check the names. That should return back with our LON Exchange server and select OK. Now that we've done that, we'll just select OK again. And that's going to save this off now. Then we'll select Next. We're not going to bother enabling authentication, but as you can see, we can enable CHAP, which stands for Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. And this just allows us to enable or allow the initiate to authenticate the target and allow the target to authenticate to the initiator. We're not going to bother in this lab environment, and we'll just select Next. On the confirmation page, we'll have a quick read through and then we'll select create. That's going to take us into a little progress summary. And once that is complete, we've now created our first iSCSI virtual disk and also as well our target. So we'll close this down. Then what I want to do is to create one more virtual disk. So we'll go to tasks, new iSCSI virtual disk. And again, create that on the C drive of LONDC1 and select next. I'm going to give it the name of iSCSI Disk 2. Then we'll select Next. We're going to create this as 500 megabytes. So click on our little drop down here. Make that megabytes. I'll make that 500. Again, I'm just going to go with dynamically expanding in this lab environment and select Next. The iSCSI target I'm going to use is actually going to be the existing iSCSI target we've just created and select Next. Read through the confirmation yet again and click Create. And now what we've done here is we've created two disks that we can now associate with our LON Exchange server. So we'll select Close. 
Now we've created the iSCSI target, the next thing we need to do is we need to associate our initiator with the target. So to do that, I need to move over to my Exchange server. So now Exchange server, all I've done is I've come into Server Manager. I'm just going to go to my Tools, and on my Tools, where I want to launch up here is the iSCSI Initiator tool. So we'll come down to iSCSI Initiator. That's telling us that the service isn't currently running, so we'll say yes, we do want to run the service. We need to specify the target, so I'm just going to come to the Discovery tab. And on the Discovery tab, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to Discover Portal. And then what we need to do is put in the IP address of the iSCSI target. Which in my case is 172.16.0.10 and I'm using the well-known port number for iSCSI of 3260. So now we've done all of this, next thing to do is select OK. So as you can see now, it's now in the table, so we'll come back to Targets. And under Targets, what we've got here is we've got our iSCSI target. So the next thing to do is click Connect. Select OK. We're now connected, so now we'll do, come into Tools, we'll just go to Computer Management. Within Computer Management, we'll just come down to our Disk Management. And then within Disk Management, what we should have is we should have a couple of offline disks. So what we'll do here is we'll just go for Disk 1, right click on Disk 1, we'll bring that online. I'm also going to bring Disk 2 online as well. Then what we'll do is we'll just initialize the disks. Once we've initialized them, we just need to format them. So what we're going to do here is just on disk 1, we're just going to right click at this point. We're going to create a new simple volume. I want to create this for our databases. So we'll select next. Brings us into wizard. We'll use all 2 gig and select next. I'm happy with the E drive and select next. What I want to do though for the volume label here is I'm just going to call this DB2. We'll create my uh, or perform my quick format and select next and select finish. Then what we'll do is we'll use disk2 for our log files. So what we'll do is right click again. New simple volume, select our next button, and what we'll do here, yep, 500 megs fine, select next, F is fine, select next, but what we'll do here is we'll call this logs. And then select next, and then select finish. So this point here, what we've done is we've created one of our servers as nice because target, we've then taken our exchange server, we point our exchange server at the storage area network, and we've then used those disks that we created on the iSCSI target as a storage location for our database and our log files for our mailbox server. That's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.